don't care. It's like a- I don't care what fucked up color the shirt is. It's the music recording then. Out of the shower to the bedroom the more something fresh. From the bedroom to the studio To react to the best If your day is blown, we crank to the morn Make sure your sub is on while we playing your song And it's gonna be on We rock three channels up here on this YouTube stream And we always let our subscribers know that they are supreme Hey, to stand by cause we so fly React to the beat cause I'm that guy To move you all night long While I tell you what's happening in this song like Music make me crazy, baby, do it for me louder Viewers know my cross keep on bumping with the song I'ma make you sweat until they turn the house lights on After party at the Music Recording Network What is up, YouTube? How y'all doing? Yeah! How y'all doing, YouTube? Hey! <laughs> they got my throat hurting over here laughing so hard. Um, Bill Burr, this is the last one for the night, man. Um, Black Fridays, um, clothes in Harlem. What? Clothes in Harlem, golly, what oh my gracious, man. This dude, hey, y'all hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, man. Today is Patreon Sunday, man. Our patrons um picking what we're gonna react to. Um our patrons guaranteed to get their request in. Um, y'all become a patron, help support the channel. Um, links in the description below. And, um, even if it's comedian stuff, man, we'll react to it and everything and all that stuff, man. And also check out our live, um, channel, our live channel, the music recording network live, the music recording network live. That's a separate channel. So without any further ado, let's check this bad boy. Out. <laughs> Actually, oh I got a couple of uh, friends of, uh, African persuasion and, uh, I got to get rid of them, man. I got to admit to you. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm spending too much money on clothes hanging out with them. Because I got to, like, fucking try to keep up with their wardrobe. It's like every time they go out, they got all brand new shit on. <laughs> all brand new shit. So when I show up with my white version of brand new, which is, you know, I basically, I iron the shit, right? I ironed it, right? It's new. <clears throat> they just start trashing me. I can't keep up with them, man. They got, like, fucking 58 pairs of sneakers <laughs> ever notice that shit like every color fucking Timberland and I don't give a shit what fucked up color their shirt is they got a pair of shoes to match it and a hat <laughs> I don't care it's like a I don't care what fucked up color their shirt is what fucked up color <laughs> you got that right they got some shoes to match it Timberland <clears throat> I don't give a shit what fucked up color their shirt is. They got a pair of shoes to match it and a hat. <laughs> it's like a rule or something. <laughs> They're the worst. Even when you wear some new shit, there's like some sort of rule that you got to like space out the amount of time with, within which like that you wear it. Because God forbid you wear the same shirt within a 10 day period. One of them's going to notice. <laughs> All of a sudden just look at you funny like this motherfucker's got the same shit. He had on last Tuesday. <laughs> and then the whole class like, oh, shit. <laughs> and everybody just starts making fun of your fucking clothes. <laughs> First they do the math. Like, what was that, five days ago? Five days, this motherfucker got five shirts. <laughs> he got five shirts. They start breaking it down. Yo, his first shirt be saying Monday. Next shit be saying Tuesday. <laughs> so on the weekend, he ain't be wearing no shirt. <laughs> I'll tell you, that's actually funny. You know what? That's actually how, uh, how I judge black guys now. When I first came to the city, like, all black people scared me. <laughs> I was like the typical white dude from, like, the suburbs, you know what I mean? I had no frame of reference, you know? So my only frame of reference with black people was, like, those, remember those early 90s gangster rap videos? Throw the fucking L.A. riots in there, man. It was fucking horrible PR. I'm watching the videos. Look, he's got a nice car. He's got all the women, and he's still fucking mad. <laughs> These black dudes are never happy. <laughs> but after 10 years of living in the city, this is how I narrow it down. Whether well, black dude scares me or not. Black dudes with dirty sneakers scare the fucking shit out of me. <laughs> no. I figured it out in my head because I know from hanging out with them, that's the last shit 
that they're gonna let go, the immediate shit that they have on. So I think, you know, if his sneakers are fucked up, that means his life is fucked up. Every time he leaves his building, the whole neighborhood, oh, shit! <laughs> Everyone starts making fun of him. He's on the train in a bad mood. I kind of have this howdy doody, kind of mug me kind of face. <laughs> I'm not saying something's gonna happen, I'm just saying, I'm paying attention. <laughs> So I've been seeing this girl recently, uh, this black girl, right? She lives up in Harlem, you know? Gone out like three, four times, you know? First time we hung out, we hung out in like the village area in New York, you know, which is sort of like a racially mixed area. <laughs> so shit was cool, you know what I mean? Second time we hung out was more like midtown, you know? Then the third time, she called me at like 3.30 in the morning and she wanted me to come up to her apartment, right? So it's 3.30 in the morning, she lives in Harlem, I look how I look, so it's a fucking situation. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, not a good situation. Yeah, you know the deal, right? Basically, a white dude feels comfortable up to about like 98th, 99th Street. You know what I'm saying? The second the streets start getting into like triple digits, like 100, 101st Street, start getting like a little asthma, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, it's starting to get a little high up here. <laughs> you feel that little tightness in your chest? Can you feel that? 106th Street, you're like leaning on shit, like, dude, where'd all the cabs go? How come there's no taxis up here? Dude, what's a bodega? I don't know what that is. Let's get, let's get the fuck out of here. So I'm praying to God she's going to tell me to take the subway, get off at like 105th Street, 103rd, you know, which is like the first stop in Harlem where I can still look over my shoulder and see like all the white people like disappearing over the horizon, you know? <laughs> she goes, no, man, you want to get on the Uptown 2-3 train, you want to get off at 125th Street. I'm like, God, fuck, 125th Street. 25th. Jesus Christ, Damn. that's like right in the middle of everything. <laughs> I'm going to be surrounded on all four sides. I can't fucking do this. <laughs> So, at this point, I'm really trying to hide, like, the bitchy tone that's starting to creep into my voice, you know? And I'm trying to ask for really specific directions for when I get up there, because I want to know exactly where I'm going. So she starts naming the streets I have to go down, and every other street up there is named after, like, a black leader, you know? She's like, make a left on Adam Clayton, take a right on Frederick Douglass, I'm like, ah, fuck Adam Clayton. <laughs> no, dude, go on the internet, look up Adam Clayton. Did he kill a bunch of white people during the slave revolt? Dude, I ain't going up there till I know what Adam Clayton did. Fuck this shit. <laughs> so at this point, I'm really having a battle with myself. Because I'm thinking I can't do this, right? I'm like, I can't do this, but my dick's going, no, come on, man, we can do this, all right? <laughs> Just relax. Pull yourself together. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> did he did <laughs> Oh, we can't do this. My dick was like, hold up now. Pull yourself together. Oh, my God. That joint almost killed me, yeah. Wait a minute. Oh, my God. Because I'm thinking I can't do this, right? Wait you know what a minute. Thing to fuck this shit. Oh, my God. Oh. So, at this point, I'm really having a battle with myself. Because I'm thinking I can't do this, right? I'm like, I can't do this, but my dick's going, no, come on, man. We can do this, all right? Just relax. <laughs> Pull yourself together and get on the goddamn train, right? <laughs> so as always, I listen to my dick. Oh yeah, I get on the train. By the time I get up there, it's like five or four in the morning, right? I'm staying on like Malcolm X and like Danny Glover or some shit, right? <laughs> I don't even know where the hell I'm at. Oh. When I see the street, I want to go up. I want to go up St. Nick. I can literally see her Saint apartment Nick. building. But there's like five or six black dudes standing right on the corner, right where I want to walk by. So I'm like, fuck! Four o'clock in the morning. I was on like some morning. reality show at that point, like some sort of like white guy survivor. He was ridiculous. <laughs> so I'm thinking, I got to walk right by these guys, right? You know what's funny? I think that they were actually more surprised to see me than I was scared, you know? And I was really, really scared, you know, but I'm also really, really white, you know? Like, shockingly Caucasian. You know what I mean? Like, if you're not ready for me, I can, like, surprise you. <laughs> no, especially if you live up there. You've probably seen a white person for hours, possibly days. So when I show up, it's almost like magical. Like a leprechaun came out of nowhere, you know? I feel like I should have, like, a little pot of gold. 
<laughs> like a rainbow behind me. Top of the morning to you, latte. Kind of dance my way past them. My but it's been going all right, you know. Once I get in her apartment, I'm fine, you know. I relax, sit down, you know, watch a hip hop countdown. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend like I know the groups, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just getting there that's a fucking pain in the ass. But you know, I don't get mad at it, because I figure, you know, black dudes gotta go through the same shit though, right? When you go out to the suburbs, go fuck a white girl. Right? <laughs> just that same awful feeling of just leaving your people behind, you know, just less and less of you as you're fucking driving out there. <laughs> Probably start off lean and you're all fucking cool. 20 minutes in, you're driving like 10 and 2, the radio's up, like, dude, I don't like this shit. <laughs> I don't like this shit at all. There's too much grass. I don't see any rims. This is fucked up. None of the windows are tinted. I can clearly see white people in every car. This is fucked up. Listen, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much for coming out. I don't see any rims and shit. I don't see no rims. I don't see no tint. I can see everybody. Oh my God, man. This dude is on. He on like popcorn. This is fucked up. None of the windows are tinted. I can clearly see white people in every car. This is fucked up. <laughs> Listen, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much for oh coming Oh, my out. God, yo. God bless you. Thank you very much. I, I can't rewind. Right, man, I can't rewind that, man. That joint was hurting my stomach, man. Hey, my man. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm tending to. <laughs> oh, I don't see no rims. Nah, man, we... <laughs> Hey, we ain't like that. We ain't like that. We we like, oh, ain't nothing gonna happen to us up out here. <laughs> God dang. Oh my gracious, man. That joint hurt my stomach, my throat hurting. I'ma get on up out of here. Hey, y'all take it light, take it slow, tell a Mike Cross. Told you so. Peace out.